live. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Good evening uh, to those of you who are here in the UK. And good morning and good afternoon to the rest of the world. My name is Glenda. I am a mother. I am also a wife. I am an operating room nurse. And I'm also a global online entrepreneur. Welcome to another episode of Nursepreneurs in Action Live. <laughs> and for, for tonight's episode, we are still in uh we are still discussing Danny Chanson's book, which is First Steps to Wealth. And for tonight's episode, we are now in chapter eight, which is slaves to uh death. <laughs> death as in D E B T as in Utang po. <laughs> right so in this chapter the author uh shared with us she shared with us the reasons or the factors why we become slaves to death and also of course she also shared with us how we can overcome that how we can actually move on and and move forward towards um towards financial freedom so uh she also shared with us you know some some uh good inputs or pointers how to to get through or to push through towards our goal for financial freedom and one is we have to accept the full responsive full responsibility of our actions decisions of our choices especially towards spending you know our money because it will make a big impact towards our future towards our tomorrow especially uh in our financial financial um future and another thing is that we have to control we have to control our spending control our spending uh this time we are living in a consumers consumer driven world and and this world is created by the two percent remember when the author divided the whole population into two two percent these are the people with a wealthy mindset they are driven by wealth they want to accumulate wealth and more wealth and the other the 98 percent these are the masses of 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 poverty mentality so what this two percent do they keep on creating and producing products and things to 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 lure the 98 percent to keep on buying to keep on spending their money until they uh end up with debts loans of high you know interest rates until they fell into this big hole of financial doom yeah and also um if we want to move forward towards financial freedom we should also we should also um try we should we should try to live or assert for ourselves to live in a in a debt free life because if if we are if we have debt it actually consumes us from the inside it prevents us from it prevents us from 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 uh, going. It prevents us from pursuing what we like in life. It prevents us from pursuing our goals and our dreams. And 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 to do that, bottom line is that we have to live a simple life. You know, she said, try to live a simple life. When we say you know simple life, we have to simplify simplify our life simplifying means we have to to declutter we have to declutter our life we have to declutter our brain and and that is also about you know like um about taking control of our you know, expenses of this uh nonsense uh expenditures about this uh, thoughtless purchases that is i think what she means by decluttering and 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 uh last but not the least this is her favorite phrase actually i like it when she said that um we have to we have to be faithful of the little things we have we have to be faithful of the things we have so we will be so we will be ruler of so much more 
I think what she means here is that we have to be, we have to give value to the things that we have already. We have to give value of, of, of the, you know, assets that we have accumulated that we should not be, be waiting for, for, for more, you know, to come. We have to start with whatever, you know, we have, so we will be blessed more. Um, she said that when we learn how to, when we, when we gain the knowledge and the wisdom, how to convert our, uh, our regular income into a, into a passive income, that's when we actually are on the road towards financial freedom. And with that in mind, she said, if, if we finally, if we finally mastered, if we finally mastered that, that, uh, conversion of, of our regular income into passive income we actually don't have to sacrifice a lot we actually don't have to 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 um what do you call that we don't have to to sacrifice you know, the things that are dear to us if i think what she means here is that if if you are into collecting expensive bags if you are into you know luxurious holidays if you if you want to have a nice house to own a flashy cars this is all right this is actually all right i mean um i know she said that we have to to be in control of our expenses but what she means by this is this is when we are overdoing it because you know too much of everything is not good but if you just focus on one thing if you are that person who is driven you know if you are inspired to get up in the morning to work so you can buy a a Chanel bag then that is fine that is fine but you have first to master the art of converting your regular income into passive income if 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 you have already mastered that art then yes you don't have to sacrifice you don't have to sacrifice all these things that are dear to your heart you can continue collecting these bags but first you have to get to that place wherein you will learn how to convert your regular income into passive income which what we are doing now see we are nurses and we have ventured into uh, digital you know marketing that is one way of of converting our regular income into passive income and i want to say more about this but i am also excited to hear from these lovely ladies about their uh inputs or their takeaways you know on this chapter so i guess i have to i have to <laughs> start now um i think i want to hear it first from window please hello everyone good evening thank you very much coach for this uh for that introduction yes um well i have i'm really excited to share with you what i have learned from this uh, chapter and there are three things that i would like to share with you and one of them has been discussed already by our coach but i'm going to repeat it again for the majority of us who hasn't uh, listened to it number one it's about groom to succeed so in groom to succeed no matter what type of childhood we had now whether we are poor we were we were rich we were you know we, we came from a different background that sometimes people tend to look down on us well based on this author she said that you can choose what you can be in life which i totally agree i will tell you one thing about my life we were i grew up very poor but at, at the end of the day it's our choices and our you know our conviction on how are we going to change this life that we had number two it's about desire for financial independence desire for financial independence this was uh, this has been um mentioned by our coach and it says the law of promotion that shows us that we have to be faithful with the little things to be made ruler over much and sometimes when i was wondering about life and we had difficulty especially in terms of finances and i was reflecting and i'm reflecting about some of the challenges that we have and i was telling sometimes to myself and even to my prayers lord probably you haven't given me that uh, this much yet because you know that i'm not faithful enough yet 
you you haven't trusted me yet with this but um as i said and uh, the law of promotion it's about being faithful there's a lot of things that we can be faithful to there's a lot of things that we can do in order for us to be said we are trustworthy for our own finances number three it's about wise versus foolish spending okay we are we are used to have a we have we are used to live paycheck to paycheck and that is the reality of life and that's why we are uh, doing some extra um things in order for us to you know to get something out from that and it's sad and it's a big real realization for all of us that we need to do something for us to get out from that cycle a few years ago i was thinking um about myself about my life that you know i realized that i was living paycheck by paycheck and since i uh, read this book it made me realize that i am groomed to succeed and at the same time you know i have the potential on whatever i do so long that you do it with dedication do it with hard work and you do it with your passion then definitely you will be uh, successful so um based on this uh, third concepts and it says that people who lives by paycheck to paycheck usually spend too much for you know useless things and the money should be used to plant it again meaning to say we need to reinvest it because we we should be uh, reinvesting it in order for it to grow so those are my three takes away th three take away for this uh, evening coach glenda back to you thank you so much you know Wendelia. i remember that the the author actually correlated the money to a seed you know she said that if we live from uh paycheck to paycheck that means that we are consuming all our seeds we did not leave you know something to plant so it can grow and multiply that's what she said no so i think yeah. this is you know when i said that we have to to learn how to how to convert our regular income to to uh to a passive you know income i think that's what she means we have to we have to plant it to grow and multiply yeah so there you go that's beautiful so the next one may i call on miss <laughs> miss Lage, the beautiful matep uh she is from she is from texas but she is in florida right now on a luxurious holiday so <laughs> matep please <laughs> introduce yourself hi good afternoon everyone um my name is actually maria Teresa moskaya but they call me matet to my nearest and dearest at work they call me tess so um but i'm um, for short i'm Ted as well um my friends call me funny names back in school in college and that's fine and and um so i am so blessed to um, be joined with this lovely ladies today um, from you can all over the world and I have been um, blessed as well with the opportunity to be part of this um, digital business um, I have been looking for like um, something that I could do more than nursing or kind of like a fallback if um, nursing um, would have been an option anymore like um, not technically a retirement but it would have been nice if we could all could retire like how I've been watching all this people um on our dream team how we talk about retiring early and that would be really 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 good so i am a mom of two once um 18 at the end of um, the year so thinking about college right and um saving for college and um my daughter is 12 years old so um grown up or growing up so um but still not um totally out of um or free from responsibilities right so um i really love this book that danny johnson i actually had the opportunity to attend um danny johnson's um live conference she's from she's from here she's from us right um and i love how she talks about um financial freedom and freeing up yourself and letting the money work for you instead of you working for that money right and she's she's also christian-based um author and she basically 
all her teachings um, biblically and I like how she says that if you have wisdom to spend money wisely then you really would think of what um, you will use your money for um, so I like how um, this book talks about and when I was I was reading it and Glenda told me to read chapter 7 and 8 and I did but as, as soon as I finished reading it, I went back to the very beginning of the book because it's just so interesting and it's just so interesting to know that um, how her she shares the truth, right? Like you, it is really possible for an individual to be debt free and not slave to debt. Um, because coming from a background or our cultural background, we always have that um, poverty mentality, especially when we came to this foreign land and we think, oh, I was so deprived growing up. I didn't have this and that. Let me buy this and that. Because you think you can afford if, I mean, now and again, I will have that mentality, but I, we have worked so hard becoming debt free because when I was still in the UK, life was getting a little bit hard. I know what it feels like living paycheck to paycheck with growing family. And I agree I have to work extra hard and we still don't make the ends meet right so and i said me and me and my husband sit down and said we have to have a plan and how to find this money where are they because when benny was talking about like um writing down and making a total how much you spend a month or even a year but then where is it it's not in your tv it's in someone else's it's all it belongs to it went to the two percent um high and wealthy the richer be becomes richer and us poorer becomes poorer because we don't have that with them of how we spend our money so it made me realize and think oh yeah how do i cross that bridge going to two percent right so um and i believe this um globe uh, digital business that we have is a good venue for us to get there and we just have to work harder because like what um, the two other lovely ladies were saying if you don't plant that seed there's nothing that you can um, reap. You, you, you reap what you sow so where is your seed going such as going to the spending no kidding when you go to Costco you, <laughs> the one thing you buy for or went for came out like a 300 um spending so it easily easily if you're not frugal and if you have a mentality that i'll just work extra or i have a bonus that i'm expecting to come in let me just spend that on this um but now i have to tell myself no if i can't afford it then i can't spend it so because te technically nurses are really good earner we work hard we earn really good money if we just work harder right so what when you think about like can you can you afford to buy tesla of course you can you just have to work harder but would you spend all your time working harder just because mm -hmm. and then i keep telling i mean to be honest i only one i only own one expensive purse <laughs> because i keep telling myself who would care if i own it right i mean they own remember it one time when they see it and then that's it they won't remember it anymore but then here i am my um credit card interest will be piling up i'm still thinking i really don't own that purse that, that bag because i'm still paying for my utang for that one so i try not to spend it i spend it on good things but still now and again the we tend to forget i love how ja danny jensen is um telling us that we just have to to be careful and be a good steward of our finances because at the end of the day we earned it we work hard for it that is our wealth comparable to our life to our families so we have to take care and cherish it um, and spend it wisely we make it work for us into, instead of us working hard for that money so I love to be on that end too I love to be called the two percenter um, right so um, so that when we have big gathering, can you imagine if we see each other in the two percenter <laughs> conference <laughs> and we will all be there. That's really good. So I love it. I love it. And then um, I, I, I was getting so excited. So I have, I am three chapters ahead. So it's, it's just beautiful. I just love how this book empowers us 
and teaches us how to be good stewards um, of our wealth. So I'm so blessed, you, you girls. <laughs> Thank you so much. I could talk more and more and long, and Glenda, Glenda knows my topic. So, yes. So, uh, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Matet. Yeah, why not? Go to presenters. Go to presenters. Galing, no? Well, the author said it is possible. Remember, you know, the law of promotion? God created us with the, uh, he designed us with the the will to with the will with the desire to succeed he created us with every parts of our body you know to succeed but what he wants us to do is that we have to develop that skill we have to develop that that wisdom to move forward and get to that you know success whatever that success you know means to you and yes it is very possible to cross the line from the 98% to the 2% because that's what, you know, God has, has designed us to be. You know, he designed us to be wealthy. He, 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 the, the great designer, which is, who is God, you know, um, designed us, designed us to succeed. So we have everything that is needed for us to succeed. What we need to do is we have to develop ourselves. It depends, you know, how, how far you are willing to go to invest in yourself, to, to gain that skills, to gain that knowledge and to move forward to, you know, get to your goal and, and achieve that success, whatever that success you know, means to you. Yes. So next, <laughs> to that, to that, may I call on Leah, please. Hello. Yeah, I like what Matet has mentioned that two percent. We are going to be long with the two percent. Uh, yeah, In <laughs> me too. <laughs> Instead of road to success, road to two percent. Two percent. I love that. <laughs> road to two percent of population. Yeah, we should choose the title. Road to two percent. <laughs> yeah, road to two percent. <laughs> That's a nice. Yeah, slogan. way to go. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. Good evening. It's uh, Leia here. I'm a nurse as well. At the same time, I'm a part-time digital business owner. Yep. Yeah, um, we're discussing about the seven, eight chapter of Danny Johnson's book. Uh, the, the, yeah, they mentioned about the book uh, Slaves to Death. Um, well, uh, they've mentioned Coach Glenda, Wendell, and Matet mentioned about poverty, uh, poverty mentality. And Danny Johnson gave us the biggest picture of why everyone is in so much debt because a lot of us um live pay to pay check to paycheck and there are some people rely on credit cards for their basic living expenses and i was like that before and honestly it was it was not really a good feeling because you always rely on a credit card and also um every one of us carries some type of debt like car loans as i've mentioned credit cards mortgage mm -hmm. and so we, here we are, we are in a society that has accepted that as part of our life, which is not very good. So, and it's increasing because the debt is increasing for everyone because they have this uh, mentality that they have to um, fund, their, fund their, themselves or their family for this um, um, life, lifestyle that they have to maintain. So, which is not very good as well. So she, Danny Johnson mentioned about um, according to Danny, uh, Danny Johnson, to replace this poverty mentality, we have to change our mindset. We have to change our way of thinking. We change how we view the money. So instead of um, spending it luxuriously, just spend it wisely, as simple as that. I know it's, it's easy to say, but as what has Matet mentioned and Wendell and Coach Glenda, nothing is impossible if you're if you're willing to improve your life, if you're willing to be out of debt, you have to spend less. You have to able to control. You have to be able to control how to spend unnecessarily. So that's how you want to to become successful. Remember the Danny uh, Danny Danny Johnson mentioned about the law of desire as well in this chapter that everyone has a desire, desire to be successful. The law of desire does not mention about desire of stuff, a desire to have a freedom. So you know the freedom of having, the freedom of having um, no debt, the freedom of a uh, control of your life that you don't have to worry about anything. So, 
So that's 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 how I understand this chapter. And 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 Danny, Daddy, Daddy Johnson mentioned as well that we are not designed. Um, let me read because um, <laughs> I like to read some lines of Danny Johnson's book. Uh, so we are not designed for poverty. We are not designed for death. We are designed with uh, wealth in mind. So I make use of that um, desire. I will make use of that design, and don't be in control of the debt that we have in our life. So that's my take on this um, chapter. Yes, that's way nice. to go, two percent. Two percent. I like that one too. I remember that again. You know when she said that. Um, yeah, the desire for for financial independence again, and this is related to what she said that you have to be faithful with what you have. So, if what you have is is two thousand, you know, salary then you have to be faithful to that. You should not be dreaming or waiting for your salary to go up to 4,000. And only then you will start paying for your debt. Only then you will start saving. You have to be faithful to that 2,000. You have to budget it. You have to, you have to find out. You have to find out where the most of this 2,000 is going. She, she worded it as uh, you have to find out where you are bleeding where you are bleeding so you need to find out where it is so you can put a band-aid on it or you can apply in a tourniquet you don't wait for your salary to go up to four thousand to start you know your journey to financial freedom you have to be faithful with whatever you have if all you have is two thousand monthly salary then be faithful to that you have to make sure that you 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 start paying for your debt then you start saving and then you know the rest you you live with whatever you know is remaining it is important that you save at the end of the day just like but that said like yes we are nurses and we are actually you know we are earning you know good money but at the end of the day it's not how much you earn it's how much you spend so if you earn five thousand and you spend six thousand what so what if you're earning five thousand if you earn six thousand you're still broke yeah so there you go so next one is miss mirazel i wish i earned five thousand <laughs> <laughs> i wish to <laughs> oh um good evening everyone my name is mirazel i'm married and i'm a very busy mom to two growing up kids I am also a nurse and an online entrepreneur, and so our hashtag is Nursepreneur. Oh, um, two percenters. <laughs> yeah. We're on the road to two percenters. <laughs> um, well, first of all, I'd like to say hi to Michelle. She's watching. Uh, she hi, said, Michelle. Yeah, she said, I want to be a two. Uh, I want to be a two percenter too. <laughs> yes. Hi, <laughs> then, Priya. Yeah. Of course, two percenter. Yes, Leia said hi, Matet. Nice to see you again. Catch Aww. up with you on the next go live. Yes. So, yes. yeah, and thank you to everyone to whoever is watching this episode, and I'm hoping that you get something out from everything that we will be saying tonight. So I'll share to you my take on Chapter Eight: Slaves to Debt. D-E-B-T, utang. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many interesting points in this chapter and they are all true. And some of them I am guilty of doing from before. And some of them um, actually I'm doing at the moment, not realizing that it's actually making me a slave to debt. So Danny Johnson shared her story and how she became addicted to um, stuff slash material things. She lived in a huge six bedroom house with six toilets and a massive guest house. She had, uh, she said she had a wall full of artworks with massive price tags, several leather couch, a pool, a tennis court, and even a baby grand piano when none of them know <laughs> how to play. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so she came from from poverty and when she earned money from her business ventures, she started buying an buying and accumulating all this stuff for her and her family thinking that it's wealth and it's being wealthy until she realized that um, she didn't need all this extravagant stuff in order to live and be happy she was just she said she was just doing this for recognition 
um, impressing people and gaining approval from them and basically just being greedy. And this very often happens to us very easily. We are all desiring financial independence. And so we work hard and harder each day, book extra shifts and overtimes, then we get extra money and then we start buying things. We start buying, instead of investing, we buy a 70 inch huge TV when we only have a tiny lounge and then we will be sat there watching almost cross-eyed because it's enormous. And then our <laughs> electricity bill multiplies through, right? Because we, we just we are just wanting the things that everybody else does. We wanted the, the latest gadget when it's not suitable for your house because your lounge is so tiny. Um, yeah, we buy a thousand pounds worth of like Louboutin stilettos when you can't even wear it for work because we work as nurses and we wear flat shoes, flat comfy shoes to last a 12 and a half hour work day. Um, can't even wear it during days off because we are running errands, we're running after our growing up kids and we're catching, catching up with the chores of life. So um, I have, or we have, I'm sure Glenda has got a lot of enormous uh, designer bags as well <laughs> that we paid an enormous amount of money for. But I don't use them at work. I don't use them when I go to work because of infection control. And I don't want to ruin it and keep wiping it with antibacterial wipes or much worse, lose them, lose the entire bag at work. So, um, yeah, and because we work hard and harder, book extra shifts, we're always at work and there's no time for us to use all these nice material things that we bought for ourselves. Um, we wanted um, financial freedom so bad that we find plenty different ways how to generate um, extra income. May it be by means of a second job or a side hustle or maybe maybe even a promotion. But sometimes uh, the more money we make, the further in debt we go. Because when we have established some extra income monthly, we then start planning for bigger things like um, a new nice car or a new bigger house. Um, we get more things on installments because we know that we are expecting something extra next month that we could pay for it next month and the following month. And then as a result, we will have bigger, bigger mortgages and bigger car loans and more outgoings. And then we will, we will be forever in debt. Um, one very concrete example is the trap of lease cars. Okay, in the book, the author highlighted that it's one of the worst financial trap that we could ever get into. But then again, this is debatable because some people find this scheme much more convenient maintenance wise. So um, this is according to Danny Johnson, she described the scheme as eternal revolving, revolving credit, which is, by the way, is so true, right? We get a car um, on lease, uh, on the lease car scheme, 400 pounds to 500 pounds monthly, which, which goes nowhere to any point of purchase. And then two, three years down the line, we will be offered to getting a new shinier car and then the credit cycle repeats itself. So, so there we are trapped into getting a depreciating purchase, which is not even an asset. So yeah, don't, don't get lured into those uh, kind of schemes, but then some people prefer it. They have their own reasons, but then it's, it's a matter of wise thinking and wise decision making. So maybe at times when we wonder why am I even further down in debt, when I'm earning more this time. Um, it's because of all these traps that surrounds us, which is by the way, has been formulated by the 2% of those who truly understand what wealth is. Yeah, we all remember the 98% per, uh, the split between the population, 98% uh, is the poverty mentality. Poverty. Yes, and the 2% had a wealthy mindset. And if we are not wise and skillful on how we spend our money, we will all be slaves to debt. So the main issue I think in this chapter is wise spending versus foolish spending. It doesn't sound nice, foolish spending. <laughs> um, to put everything in a clear context, the author said that money is like a seed, just like what everyone said. Um, money is like a seed, it 
cannot multiply if you're consuming it all. So your monthly income is supposed to grow some something like seeds, just like seeds. But if you leave from paycheck to paycheck, that means you're eating all the seeds. You have nothing to plant and grow. And so I think instead of finding things to purchase when we get extra money or much better allocate a portion of your salary to invest on something that makes more money is the way to go. Invest. Um, if you can get something like a passive income generating scheme, the better. Through this, we are creating wealth and we will be debt free. Thank you. Yes, that's very nice. So yeah, I have nice bags. <laughs> yeah. Those bags, those foolish you know, spending, I did that when I was single. See, like the author, she went through a process, yeah? She bought this very big house. She has a grand piano that no one in her household knows how to play. So I was like that too. You know, I am, this is my inspiration. As I said, there's nothing wrong. If the bag makes you happy, it gives you the motivation to get up in the morning and work because you want to buy the Chanel, then my goodness. Don't worry, don't worry, worry Glenda. You've justified yourself already on the first seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, but then again, you know, um, just like the author, you know, said, you have to reach to that point wherein you have to decide to be financially free, to have the financial freedom. If if you yourself is not ready for it, then if you have kids, then at least do it for your children, because you cannot leave a legacy for your kids, like a, a debt, you know, legacy, because this 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 will become a cycle. This will become a cycle. So your kids will do it to their children and their children, children. So if you have children, then you have to like change you know, everything. So yes, I am a renewed <laughs> mom. I haven't bought an expensive bag since <laughs> road to two percent. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. If 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 I do have, you know, something, it is because, you know, my, my, my husband gifted it to me. Probably, you know, he felt guilty that I haven't bought, you know, anything. And he knows this. these are the things, you know, that motivates me because he knows about it. He'd been checking one by one with the price tag, you know, because I never throw the, the receipts. I always keep it inside the bag because you know how I look. I, I heard that, that in the airport, someone, there is like a, a counterfeit police where they will, you know, approach you and, and, you know, check you up if if the bag you're carrying is actually you know um genuine or not oh my god <laughs> i am really scared they might approach me i will really take out the receipt and give it to them so i always you know, keep it inside the bag but you know I, I haven't done that it's a good thing though that was my learning curve and then that when i was single but i didn't do that for you know the sake of of just buying it i i know my limits i have learned from the first year i came here that i have to have an emergency fund because uh living abroad anything could happen there would be an emergency so i should always have you know a cash in my account where i can buy at least a flight ticket you know two-way flight ticket and my allowance you know with that so now that i have grown my family there are four of us then i have to i have to grow that 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 savings to times four so there you go how can i grow that when when i am not even you know working full time so i have to learn i have to learn how to budget you know everything and i i learned as well how to convert my regular income <laughs> into passive income so then you don't have to sacrifice a lot so i have sacrificed my bags yes but then i have children i also want my children you know to to feel special <laughs> i want to buy them stuff that will make them feel you know good as well so okay, there you go bags versus children <laughs> exactly <laughs> so i'm not buying it for myself i am giving it to my kids now and 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 aside from that we also have to save really I, I i really do believe that we have to save we always have to set aside you know something that we should not you know my father you know told this to me i don't know i don't know if i'm allowed to say this <laughs> why the chinese are rich because they live like that they earn 10 they don't spend ten. They just you know spend four or five, and the five is is straight to their savings. So that's why you know they are rich. 
So somehow I want to be Chinese even though I have big eyes, but it's easy to follow, you know? <laughs> so I always believed in that though. I always believed that you have to pay. This is actually what he said. Like, you have to pay yourself for a job well done. See, I come home today. I am very tired. I have to, you know, prepare my kids, go to bed so we can really do this. And at the end of at the end of the month, when you get your salary, don't spend it all. Pay yourself first. Before you know you you pay whatever, you go to town, you know, it's somewhere and all that. Before you spend your money on that, you pay yourself first for a job well done. I will remember this day when I came home tired. I will pay I will pay myself for this day <laughs> for sure. So that is your saving. Pay yourself and then the rest you spend it for, you know, whatever you want to spend it. Always, always set aside in something. Yes. <laughs> so anything else? Matet, is there anything else you want to share with us? Um I like how Danny, like I was saying, um, I've been reading also another book of Danny. I like how she said that um, when we think about uh, money or the, the wealth that we have as a financial blessing from the Lord and we don't own it, it just passes by our hands. So we have to invest it wisely. So um, she she said she, she mentioned she gives to charities and, you know, um, she doesn't have to announce it to the world, right? It'll be good. Um, if we get to that part where we could just be blessing um, other people because of the blessings that we receive from the Lord, right? Um, and I always um, go back to the heart of being grateful that He allows me to have this much um, opportunity to earn, to be healthy, and have that wisdom to um, an understanding how to get to the part where we could be. Um, wealthy as well right like i mean it's not by accident that we came across danny johnson um it is a seed from from her too that was um inputted to us so we have to treasure that we have to trash cherish that and we have to learn that learn that get that knowledge that she i, I like how she was saying um i don't know you i, I mean her introduction of that book right i don't know you but i am glad that you are reading my book because it is a beginning it is a beginning of understanding it is a beginning of wisdom of how she can share her um her testimonies her her um journey of becoming financially um, free um from debt um so i like it how um, we how she said if we can be trusted with small things then um god will bless us with bigger things so if we don't know how to labor in this small land then she, he will not give us bigger land so i like it that way how he said it um like that because um if we how biblically we are created by the lord designed um adam before he sinned he had dominion over everything so we should just go back to that point where we have dominion over everything not the world having dominion over us especially when it comes to debt because it hurts and you like i like what glenda said that you pass it to you it's not the right legacy to pass to your children um you want them to start it right you don't like sometimes um, not sometimes all the time as parents we are so protective of our kids we want them to be successful already sometimes we don't want them to go through um, um, some heartaches because we've been through that. We want to cherish and make sure, you know, they grow up successful, and especially with the influence of the world, the social media and the society. We have to be really careful of how we, um, we present and we witness to, to our kids because our kids is our first, um, customers. <laughs> They're our first investment, right? So I like it. I'm, I'm, I'm I'm so excited of what is to unfold. Thank you, Glenn. You are so welcome. So anything else, Windell? Yes, um, definitely. Questions? Thank you very much. Um, I really, um, you know, I really learned a lot tonight or this evening, especially um, 
those um, lessons that we can take away that we can relate as well into our lives and one thing as well is um, you have to we have to remember this that every one of us we have our own brains it just depends on how are we going to use it so most of the popular um, even it's not only Danny Johnson but even uh, other um, speakers or you know inspirational speakers that's what they do whatever we do we have to do it according to our passion we have to do it because we love what we are doing and at the same time we need to do a lot of things that you know that make us up make us happy and at the same time if we're not really happy with what uh, with our previous experience obviously we need to change that yeah that's true Leia. Do you, want to, do you want to share some more? Well, I always say about mindset. It's always on our will to change our life, our mindset. If you really want to, to be out of debt, to be debt free, you have to change your mindset. You have to change your lifestyle if you can. And don't live, live, live your life the way you see other people live, like to, to impress or be, as what have Maricel have mentioned, because your neighbor, your friend have this, have that. So don't don't copy them if you know that you can't afford them. If it's not beyond if it's beyond your means, don't do that. And don't don't accept as well that the way of living now or accept that or living paycheck to paycheck as a way of life. Just try to change it. That's not that that is not the the that's not living your life by design. It's just living by default because you're copying everyone. That's all. <laughs> yeah that's nice that's very true living your life by default <laughs> miss marissa come on do you have anything more uh, i think i've said mostly everything that i wanted to say it's just that you know um like the thing that you said earlier we are all created to, su to succeed it's up to us how we tackle the road towards that success so we all have um you know different barriers in life and different challenges in life but with perseverance and the correct mindset we we would all succeed and yeah leia said not live by default especially here in the uk we're talking about kids like it's very usual here to have the kids get their like have student loans, right? So that's a loan, right? So it's a debt. So if if we, but I know it's it's debatable again. It's really difficult to send kids to college. But if we can avoid putting our kids to that norms, um, then the better. So they would they'll be paying that for the rest of their lives, though. So start, start from there simple as that so create ways now on how to top up um, your monthly um, income may it be through a digital business like what we do uh, or doing extras but doing this is better because <laughs> you're working smarter than harder <laughs> so the, the websites are there ladies and gentlemen if you want to find more find out more on how we do what we do on how we can easily create another source of income alongside what we are currently doing at the moment. We're all nurses, we still work as nurses, but on the other side, we are um, gaining something from our digital business. So find out, poke your head in, you won't know what's in store for you if you don't look into it. That's it. Yes, <laughs> I was about to say that, groom to succeed. So our you know, father up there, uh, designed us, groomed us, you know, to succeed. And um, if we, if we come to think about it, you know, the way our parents, you know, groomed us to succeed is that this they they provided us with a good education. They sent us to school without taking out loan. This is something that I makes me, you know, think ever since you know, I learned that most of them. Even the the you know our surgeons and all that that they actually took out loan to study, and it makes me come to appreciate you know what our parents had done you know for us thinking that we came from the third world country, 
and um it should be you know like 10 times difficult for our parents to send us to school but look what they did yeah they paid for our education we didn't pay for our college tuition fees why would our kids pay for theirs yeah, exactly exactly so that that is my driving force to, to save up though they were telling me that it's normal you know everyone is doing that to take out loans but deep inside i was thinking my parents didn't do this to me why would they do that to my kids if i can afford it then then i would at least you know try i will try i will do my best you know i will do my best to 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 keep them away you know from that road of taking out loans you know and all that and it makes me really you know appreciate so this is how our parents you know, groomed us to succeed they provided us with you know education for free imagine they paid for everything they paid for a tuition fee because we live like 45 minutes from the main city so we have to stay in you know dormitories boarding houses and all they paid for that as well they paid for our food <laughs> they catered for our food we have allowance the transportation and all that imagine you no know? and now i i just feel that it's, it's not going to be fair you know if if um i would do it to my kids i mean I would try my very best to you know to give them what my parents has given me. So there you go. Again, another legacy. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else? Thea is, I wish Thea is here. No, no, oh, she's making comments. So what else? Tetai, anything more? <laughs> I like Matet because she seems like she's really well versed about you know the biblical you know story, which Danny Johnson is. I am really yes, amazed is, by yes. this woman because you know she said that she's not actually well educated. She said she did not even you know finish college. She just finished in high school and then she got pregnant. But my God, she's full of wisdom, and she seems like she memorized you know, the the whole Bible and all that. She knows about medical terms she knows about you know what the doctors has to go through they, they ha she has you know a bit of knowledge about you know medicine about psychology my goodness this woman she's very talented very talented full of wisdom yes that's it so we have i think that's know, it <laughs> Hi, Thea, and hi, Michelle, and we have four people, you know, watching us, and thank you so much to everyone who is watching us right now live, and to those who's going to watch this on replay, thank you, thank you so much. So there you go, shall we say bye-bye? Bye-bye. Yeah, 2%, 2%. 2%. <laughs> 2%. <laughs>